Hey, Pete here for Studio Live today. Now, fading out the end of your tracks is a way to make them sound clean, polished, and professional. And in this GarageBand for iOS quick tip, I'm gonna show you how you can fade out the end of your songs on your iPhone or your iPad running GarageBand. In fact, I'm gonna show you not one, but two ways that we can fade out the end of our tracks. So, let's go. Okay, so here we are in GarageBand on my iPhone, and this is my recent song called Sin, which this is actually a pre-release version because I wanted to show you this fade-out technique using this song. So let's scroll over here and go to the end of the track to start with, and I will play you what the end of this track sounds like right now without any fade-out at all. So there you go, you can hear there's some pops, there's some clicks, I think I'd tap my guitar, probably tap the microphone. At the end of the song, you can always get pick up a little bit of extra noise. So what I wanna do is I wanna use a fade out to actually improve the sound at the end of this track. So as I mentioned, there's two ways to do this. The first and most simple way to do this is to use GarageBand's automatic fade out option. To get to that, we tap in the settings in the top right corner here, we scroll down, and we select fade out. And now if we go back to our song, what GarageBand will do is fade it out. Now it's around about the three or four bars. I don't actually know because I don't use this in my final mix. I use a different method, which I'll show you in a moment, and I'll tell you why I use that different method as well. But let's play this and hear what GarageBand will do with its automatic fade out. Okay, so that's an improvement. It's better than not having any fade out at all, but what you were able to hear there is that every instrument, every track faded out the same because all it's doing is fading out our master mix, which means the vocals are coming down, the guitars are coming down, the drums are coming down, everything's coming down. And what I actually want with this track is I want the vocals and the lead guitar to ring out at the end, whereas I want some of my more crunchy guitars with that distortion to fade out earlier so that we're not hearing that amp hum and some of those other issues that we have with the audio file. So let's jump in and I'll show you how we can do this using our old friend automation. Okay, so before we jump in and get started with the automation, I'm gonna give you my usual warning about automation, which is that you should leave it until the very end of your mixing or even mastering process. The reason for that is as soon as you start adding automation, you can no longer use the volume sliders here. To adjust your volume, you must use automation. I'll show you what I mean by that as we go through. But let's get started with these. So we need to zoom in and come to the end of our track here and any of these tracks that have uh, audio at the end, we wanna fade out. So let's tap on the guitar icon here. We're gonna tap on automation, and this will bring up our automation lines or lanes that we have here so that we can actually add some automation. And if you wanna learn more about automation and all the cool things you can do with it, as always, I've got some videos which I will link down below. But for now, we just wanna use automation to fade out. So in the top left here, we're gonna slide on our automation slider, which means we can start adding automation points. We'll zoom in and let's just tap just towards the end of this acoustic guitar. We're gonna tap again right here towards the end and we're just going to drag that Point down there. So this means that, in fact, we'll move this a little bit further out. So we'll have that last hit, it'll start to ring out on the acoustic and then it's gonna fade off so that we don't have any of that background noise. We're gonna do the same again on this next track. Just tap and tap and then slide down. And then we can just tap and drag this over to match the other acoustic. So you can see quickly, don't tap like that or you'll get another point. We're gonna undo um, and we'll come down here to the next track. So this is my delay guitar and what I actually want with this one is I want it to ring out a little bit longer. So this is where you're gonna start seeing the power that we have here with these automation points. So this one, I can make come right down to here and then fade out at the end because that's that last lead guitar that I want to actually go a little bit longer. So that is gonna work well. We've now got our crunchy distorted guitar, which I wanna do the exact opposite with. We wanna come in earlier and fade that one out a bit earlier too. 
So we don't want that distorted humming sound right at the end there. We want it to do its last hit and then probably about there start to fade out and finish earlier than the rest of our sounds. Uh, we've got our Seattle sound guitar here, which it doesn't actually go right to the end. Um, we'll just put a little bit of a safety one in here like that to make sure there's no kind of noise just in there on that one. Now our bass guitar down here will line up probably with our uh, acoustic guitars at the end here. In fact, no, that will come out a little bit earlier again, because again, the bass guitar and the bass amp can have quite a bit of hum when it's not actually playing a note. And that is it. So our drummer doesn't need any attention. Anders is okay. And our, actually our vocals. Uh, let's just do this because I think I heard a little bit of microphone sound right at the end there. So we don't, again, want that to, we want it to go right to the end of that, that last note that I sing. And then we want it to drop off so that we're losing that any noise that we have in the background there. We're gonna hit done now. And you can see here, these faint lines behind are our automation lanes or lines that we have on our track here. So what I'm gonna do is we'll go back a little bit further this time and let's play the end of this song now with this automation applied and see what this ending sounds like. I didn't know it was a So there you go. I probably could even do a little bit more tweaking with some of these just to adjust that. But you can see quickly that in the space of two or three minutes, you can add in your automation points. You do this right at the end of your project and then you can fade out. And obviously the same thing applies if you want to fade in some instruments or do some fade outs and fade ins in the middle of your track. This is the way to do it. And you get 100% control. You're not just trusting that GarageBand is going to know how to fade out your song. You're going to do it yourself. And it's really quite simple and doesn't take too long. Now, I did mention why you do this at the very end. And what you'll notice here is over on the left, all of these volume sliders are now yellow. And if I tap and try to slide these, they're not gonna slide because now that automation is applied, if we tap and go back to automation, the only way to adjust these now is to actually change these to add in points like that, and then to actually drag those points around to create new volume automation points to actually control our volume. We don't really want to be playing around with that early when we're doing our static mix or our rough mix. We want to be doing that right here at the end. So that's why, especially in GarageBand in, on iOS, I recommend doing your automation as close to the end of your track. Do all your static mixes, do your effects, do all of the rest of it, and then do your automation because you don't want to be playing around and fiddling with volume once you've got some automation in place. So there you go, two very simple options that are gonna help your songs sound clean and professional and radio ready. If you've got comments, questions, or suggestions, leave them down below and I'll see you in the next video.